in today's video I'm going to go through using a sketchograph. So I haven't actually used this properly before. I think I got it a couple of years ago after having a chat with my dad. I was talking about how in some pattern books you don't, they, they don't give you the pattern pieces to scale. And while it's okay to an extent for certain projects, you know, you might be able to use a scanner or a photocopier um, at home, or you might have somewhere locally um, in your town that you can use. This isn't always the case. So anyway, he mentioned this because he remembered it from when he was younger. So, so yeah, I bought one of these and I thought that my next project would be the perfect opportunity to try it out. I'm making the cozy bath time penguin pair. Just move that paper clip. It involves, there aren't too many pattern pieces, but in the back of the book, you have to enlarge by 200% and you've got the section at the top for the um, eyes. Um, there's also the beak. And then you've got the bath time penguin toy, so you've um, got the body and then the detail on the front of the penguin. So I'm going to test out using the sketch graph to enlarge this by 200%. So on the sketch graph, all of the instructions are on the box on this one. So you can either enlarge, reduce, or reproduce the original size. Because the pattern pieces were in the book and from the, the diagram it looks like you need to have it on a flat surface. I have actually traced out the, the original design, so I've got that to hand now. So yes, I've traced it onto an A4 piece of paper. I'll move the books, I don't need that anymore. And I've got a bit of A3 paper to trace that onto. So I've added a bit of blue tack, just add an extra bit, to all the corners of the A4 piece of paper just so it won't move. Just going to check the position. So to enlarge, you have the original on the left hand side and the piece of paper you want to copy onto on the right hand side. So it looks like it's on an angle, but I don't know if that matters. Maybe I should. I might put it further out just so I am not affected by, I've got a join on the table here. So okay. keep the instructions down. So this is the actual sketchograph. It's got two movable parts to it. It's got this, um, it looks like a base. I've added a bit of um, blue tack to the bottom so that I can use it in a moment to stick it to the table. There's also this point as well. So at one end, so you've got a point to this end. This um, point doesn't, you can't remove that one. But you also have these three white holes here. So they are alphabetized. So, so this one's A, this one's B, and this one's C. And depending on whether you're enlarging, reducing, or reproducing, you need to um, put the, the spike or the um, flat base into one of these. So for, okay, this one's called the pivot, I think, and this is called the guide pointer. So you'll end up guiding it along the lines on your original. So if I put, so I need to put, the pencil goes in mark C, I'm just going to grab a pencil. Okay, so I'm going to try out a mechanical pencil. So the pencil needs to go in part C, like so. Then the tracing pointer goes into B, which is this middle one. And the pivot's in A. So I'm just going to move that over there and stick down my other piece of paper. So now I need to put the pivot. I might have not left enough room at the side. So I'm just testing whether I can get this onto the piece of paper. whether there's enough room. So it's going to go off the piece of paper a bit there. So I don't know if, if I move this along slightly. Hopefully. 
Hopefully I can get it on here or I might move the table around. down there for now and then I should be able to hopefully get the two shapes on the left hand side and maybe the beak there and then I might need to reposition where this is so in order to um, enlarge what you do is you hold on to the pencil but you focus on where the point is moving and you guide it around your shape ah, I've run out of room <laughs> yeah after redo that one. I might be able to get this one out of it though. I feel like it's a real test on your coordination. Okay so I've managed to trace out the the body part of the toy. It's a bit shaky. <laughs> I feel like it's kind of testing your coordination. It's a bit weird because obviously you're holding down the pencil but you're focusing on point B rather than C. So a little bit um, challenging. Okay, let's see if I can do another one. Okay, the second piece has not come out quite so well. Okay, so actually the first attempt was better. <laughs> and that little wobbly line really wasn't much to worry about after trying to do the beak. I don't know if it's just too far away from me here, so... Maybe if I try again. I might cut out the pieces so that I can get the piece of paper a bit closer. That way it's not stretching out too far. Um, so that'll really be my next tactic. So get some scissors back with more paper and scissors. Right. Okay so I'm fairly happy with the body piece. I can smooth it out when I cut out the pattern piece. So cutting the templates into smaller pieces has really helped, so obviously having these two points closer together seems to have, in my experience anyway, made it a bit easier to use. Okay, so I'm going to carry on enlarging the other pieces for this template. Um, so my initial thoughts are there's a bit of an adjustment period to using the sketch graph. It definitely is a useful tool, but you have to have quite a steady hand to and I guess a steady hand and the coordination to carefully go over your template line um, so that it doesn't end up too wobbly on the other one you're making. I don't know how accurate it is. I mean it looks fairly accurate um, but as you can see on the other one I did with the beak I got completely confused and I was quite wobbly going up on the curved line but it might be because I was stretching quite far on the table by that point so definitely trying to keep it a bit closer um, seemed to help with um, controlling it um, for me anyway. So yeah it's quite a useful tool for basic enlarging and reducing. I don't know whether you can gauge the percentage, I'm guessing it's just doubling it in size or I hope it is because I need it at 200%. I don't know if you can move these these at all because there are other little points on it so I don't know whether you can make it you know um 150% or anything like or you know 50% okay they recommend starting by enlarging a map such as a weather map from a newspaper um I'd say this is a much simpler uh, <laughs> starting point and um, so yeah I don't really know obviously it's a lot quicker just um going to a photocopier but a sketchograph is an option if you if you want to play around with that. I don't think they cost an awful lot, so 
you know, and obviously then you don't have to go out and pay the cost for it. Um, it's just the cost you have in your own resources, you know, using a, some of your paper and a pencil. Um, but yeah, I mean, it seems right. I think you'd get better as it, at it as you went along. So yeah, that's pretty much my assessment of the Sketchgraph. Um, obviously, if you've had your own experience with the Sketchgraph, I'd love to know if you've got any tips or advice on using it. But otherwise, yeah, all my tips are just try and cut out your your original as small as possible so that you can then get your piece of paper that you're tracing onto um, as close as possible and yeah it just I think it's a matter of practice really for me and that's it for today and um, thanks for watching <laughs>